Hi, welcome to the Wednesday Mythos Club. Tonight we are playing The Night Bus by Scott Dorwood, and I'm joined today by Dan, Jake, and Mark, as always. I'm going to be the keeper tonight. Um, yeah, that's. Do, uh, do you not mean Games Master, Nat? Or... No, I don't. No, just, just keeper, Mark. You okay. know, uh, us professionals, we know how to do it. So, what we're going to do is going to do an introduction of characters. So, you guys, you're not on the bus yet. And so, we're going to do two things differently tonight. So, we're going to roll physical dice, apart from Jake, because he can't be asked. And so, we can hear it on the podcast. But and also we're going to do something else after the introductions. Who would like to introduce their character? What you're wearing? What you look like? Maybe why you're on the bus? Why you'll be getting on this so, um, late late bus? So I'll go first. I'm playing Jay Franklin. I'm going home to try and get home quickly to meet my husband. I've just started a new job. It's very stressful. I'm a bit of a, a mover and shaker. I'm very well dressed, certainly for what I do, which is uh, investigative journalism. But yeah, I'm. Uh, Let's try and speed into all the way we need to go. Cool. Thank you, Jake. And who would like to go after Jake? Go on, go on, go on. Go on. I'm, I'm playing Bobby or Bob Roberts, newly qualified nurse. Finds finds us or finds him just finishing a block of late shifts. And he's been staying late to, to help his colleagues out because somebody called in sick. So that's why he finds himself on, on the bus at this time. I've uh, been catching the bus with his the hospital porter, Skorowski, or Skorkowski. Skorkowski. And uh, yeah, we've been talking about setting up the games night. So that's all been fun. But that's the reason I've just come off a night shift and yeah, I'm a bit tired. Okay. I'm Dan. I'm playing Jack Skorkowski, who is a Polish worker in, he's a hospital porter. He has quite a big scar down one side of his face. So he tends to wear hoodie top just to hide that a bit. He's mid thirties and yeah, was looking forward to playing games this evening in the hospital canteen, but waited around for two or three hours and Bobby didn't show. So I eventually caught up with him and caught the bus. But if you look at your character sheets, you'll all see that you don't have any luck on your character sheets. So I'd like you to roll your luck so we can figure out what you have. So that's uh, 3d6 times 5. Um, 3d6 so. times 5. Oh, blimey. 6. 6. 5. 7. 2. 3. So I've got 14 in total. And did okay. you say times 5? Nah. Times 5, yeah. And then add that to your luck. So 70. I got 15. <coughs> 70 luck. Oh. <laughs> and Jake, what did you get? I got 75 in total. 75? Nice. And Mark, you had 70. 70 in total, yeah. Well, and Dan, you... 65. 65. Okay, this is uh, this is a one shot, and because it's a one shot, uh, use your luck if you want to. You can use it on certain rolls. So let's get a bit of a let's get a bit of an idea of what's going on tonight. You are all travelling on the N three night bus, departing from Oxford Circus in central London at two forty five a.m. and heading out of the suburbs. To the southeast, passing through Brixton, Crystal Palace, Penge, and Beckenham, terminating at Bromley North at 3.53. You are all on the bus. Whereabouts would people be sitting on the bus? It's a double decker. So where would where would Jack and Bobby be sat? Uh, Bobby would be sat downstairs, probably middle middle of the bus. Up into controversial. Yeah, the long kind of bench seats. Oh, yeah, the, middle, the, yeah. the, the side ones. Yeah. 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 Okay, Jack. Um, I'd be sat upstairs in a single seat away from people. So up on the second floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be up there. Okay, so as you were all getting on the bus, it stops off at several 
different stops. But when you got on, you saw sat at the back a man, larger man. His his white shirt is struggling to hold in his belly. He looks like an office worker, early thirties, sat there, and he's chowing down on a kebab. He's got like sauce dripping down him. You can tell he's been out. Maybe he hasn't been home. Been out with the lads. We're gonna say that it is Thursday night, Friday morning. Okay, and also you all have noticed young girl sat at the front with her headphones on. She's you've seen her sort of like texting on her phone, looking at Instagram, pinging, liking things, all of those. And as the bus travels, Bobby, Jack, it's like her eyes close and. You sort of admire that she can keep her head straight, even though she's, um, even though she seems to be snoozing. A bit of time passes. Jack and Bobby, you start to hear a bit of snoring coming from the guy at the back, and as you turn round, just look, he's properly sprawled over on the back seat, head down. He's got like mayonnaise coming down the side of his face, and he's well asleep. It's getting to around 3.33, and the night bus drives down Penn Chai Street. The man is sprawled on the back seat of the lower deck, snoring loudly, surrounded by takeaway packages. The lady sits upright in the front seat on the lower deck, eyes closed. It is a dark, overcast night with little moonlight. In the dim streets, you can see shop shutter fronts to the right of the bus and the darkened grounds of St. John's Church to the left. There is no one out on the streets. Suddenly, the driver cries out, What the hell is that? And the streetlights outside um, the window appear to go out as the bus swerves violently. There is sound of something smashing, and black rocks fly past, brakes squill, and the bus lurches and topples over onto the left-hand side glass and metal smashes and rends as the bus skids across the ground and smashes into something, coming to a catastrophic, abrupt halt. There is fleeting chaos as loose objects and the passengers are thrown around. Can you all give me a dexterity? You, what did you get, Jack? I got, a, I got a success on my dexterity roll, but not a hard success. Yeah. Okay, so you had a success, Jack. Okay, so I got forty, so that was uh, an out and out failure. An out failure. Yep. And Bobby, what did you get? I got a ninety-six. You got a ninety-six. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, as Jack, you take three points of damage as you're flung trying to grab hold of things through the bus. Your head cracks against the window which is now on the ground and as you look down you see just blackness. Bobby, you take four damage. Ouch. The same happens to you. You are thrown. Maybe you should have picked these bench seats that you were sat at because they didn't stop you. You landed, and you landed crack onto the pole, and you feel a shooting pain through your shoulders. <laughs> and, Jay, you managed to brace yourself. Somehow your cat-like reflexes have done this, but the bus is now on the side, and as you all sort of look around, you're a bit dazed. It's black outside, and you see a young girl she doesn't look too good she is lying on the floor it looks like she might have gone into the front and at the back the guy is like waking up oh Ah, what happened i'm gonna go over to the young girl because my sort of training would kick in at this point if if the guy at the back is making a load of noise you can assume he's probably okay whereas the mate Oh, yeah, you'll have to wait a minute. I've got some other people to see too. Yeah. All right. So what are you doing? I'm going to try and get up and go over to the young girl to see 
to just start to check to see if she's okay. Yeah, so give me a first aid check or medicine. Well, here we go. Here we go. 75 in first aid. Mm. 54. 54. Fantastic. Jack, what are you doing? Um, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm just blacked out for a while and I'm just coming to uh, and I realise what's happened and can see the the broken glass and the, the, the bus at a jaunty angle and, and all of these things. And it brings back quite bad memories of the car crash that I was in when I was younger, which led to the scar on my face. And I've, I just am frozen in that kind of recollection. I mean, it's just taken me a while to process what's going on and work out what I'm doing. And so I'm not doing much at the moment. Okay, cool. thank you. And Jay? What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to scramble to the, the very back of the bus. I'm assuming it's on its side like this. Yeah, it's on its side. Cool. So I'm going to I'm going to go for the hammer that they keep at the back of all buses in the case of emergency. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to tap the glass out so I can get out of the bus. Okay. We'll come back to you in a moment, Bobby. As you're looking over this young girl, you you determine she's banged her head against the metal pole and she's got like a skull fracture and you've seen patients like this before from like road traffic collisions you 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 think that she needs some medical help soon uh there's pressure building up um, she's non-responsive Okay, well, I would have done sort of some standard checks to aid to make sure she's still breathing and checking her airways and for obstructions. Yeah. Uh, uh, that, that's uh, all clear. That's yeah. all clear. Yeah. Okay, and, and obviously I'll now come back to the point where, so I think I'll probably realise at this point that that's beyond my medical skills to be able to, maybe I could stabilise her, but that's probably about as far as I could go. So I'll... I'll yeah, I'll, you've definitely stabilised her. You right kind of position um different things oi oi mate come on oh. I'll, i'm gonna just call out to jack jack how you doing buddy yes i'm not too bad bobby i think I, i'm all right and i'm just kind of moving through the broken glass and kind of crawling through um that that man behind he he keeps shouting calling out I, th I think he might need help yeah that means he's fine we'll, we'll check him in a second but my main concern at the moment is this young girl she's she has taken quite a quite a clattering it's quite serious oh, um, should we should we try and get her off the bus have you got your phone on you jack and i'm patting down my pockets yes 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 i have it um could you see if you could dial 999 uh, just hold on I, i'll see if i have a signal here yeah, so do you want to try dialing 999? Yep. Yeah. So you dial and the phone's silent for a moment and then you get beep, beep, beep. Give, uh, me, did... give me an intelligence check. Hold on, let's get to my skills. Fifty-four versus ninety, so that's a success. So Jack Skolkowski is a very intelligent man. I would probably assume that he was a doctor in Poland, but he can get the ticket for over here. Jack, it something isn't right. It you know that even if there's no signal you should be able to call the emergency services. It always connects. It's not working, Bobby. I don't know why it's not working. Uh, frantically just pressing the buttons. No, no worries. No worries, Jack. Don't, 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 don't panic. Um, I'm going to dig into my pocket for my phone and attempt to do the same thing. Yeah. As you pull your phone out, the screen's cracked, but it still switches on. And you get the same. You, you dial... You even press the little emergency button on the screen and it just still goes beep. 
okay that's a problem so i think one of us how are you feeling about being able to get out i i th yes i think we should should get out of this bus um i'm thinking what if it catches fire yeah. or is yeah. hit by another vehicle I, I don't want to move her that's at the moment so i think we'll probably get out and see if we can see if we can hail down somebody or get a member of the public to try and help us out i could i could stay with her oh that's a good idea jack yeah yeah good thinking yeah i'll just i'll crawl up and um and stay next to her okay i'm just gonna shout upstairs to see if there's anybody i, I can't remember if it, i can't remember jack if anybody got on i can't remember seeing anybody get on and go upstairs i'm just gonna so we're gonna shout out Any, anybody upstairs you okay i'm gonna shout back yeah i'm fine i'm just getting out of the top so as you're doing that jay as you're looking at the window with the hammer in your hand the red hammer with the metal tip yeah so you're looking out of the window in black barren wasteland and about a hundred yards away there is a faint blue glowing light sort of hovering above the ground coming a little is there any buildings in wasteland you can make out some silhouettes in the distance. And you see a flash of lightning in the sky, but hear no thunder. And as the lightning courses across the sky, you see the ground light up with little veins, sort of going towards these silhouettes of the buildings, going across. Jay, as you look out the window and you see this barren wasteland ahead of you, it dawns on you that you are no longer where you thought you were. You see this blue light travelling, you see the lightning flashing across the sky. Can I have a sanity roll from you, Jay? You may. Oh, we get to see these, don't we? What's he, what's he got? I got 17. Aww. 17 out of 40. You got a hard success. Yeah, you managed to hold it together as you're looking at this. Are you still breaking the window? Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so... No, you... I'm more... I want to do more so now. Okay. Okay, if you're sure. Oh, I'm totally sure. Okay. So, yeah, so you smash the window and it fractures. And for a moment, it's held in place and then it just drops to the ground like uh snow in front of you and everyone else on the bottom of the bus you hear the smashing sound are you okay up there yeah and i'm just making my way out uh, it looks like the uh city's gone out of power or something the city's gone out of power. Oh, blimey. Yeah, there's, there's, there's weird lights up here, but there's I, can't, I can only see silhouettes of shops. There's no street lights. The mobile network seems to be down as well, which is unbelievable, but seems to be the case. Do you think we've been attacked or something? I, I, I don't know. I don't I, I don't have any information, but it's not something that's not right. I'm, I'm just... going to call from the, the front of the bus there. Bo Bobby, who are you talking to? There's a guy upstairs. He's just trying to get out. I think that was what the smash was. He says oh. it, it, it says it's it's all dark outside. There's the, the, all the powers out. You can only just see the shops in the darkness. But so I, I don't know. Seems oh, sod this for a bunch of laughs. And the guy who was drunk on the back presses the emergency window at the back, and it swings open and he gets out and starts walking oh get some help or something just sit sit tight yeah all, all right yeah cheers. cheers see i told you it was all right yeah that's fine okay i'll, I'll assume you... he's just going up into the darkness yeah can you see anything out of the window bobby i can't let me get a bit closer towards the back so i'll wander towards the back a little bit can use yeah. the torch on my phone to see if i can illuminate Okay, yeah. Give me a luck roll, Jay. Oh, nice. He 72. got 
72 out of 75. So let me just make sure I get onto the right thingy. Okay. So, yeah, you shine your torch out, and Bobby's also looking out. And Bobby, as you're looking out, and as Jay is on the next level, but beside you, because yeah. <coughs> the bus is on its left-hand side, you see this man walking out into this wasteland. He walks, and this blue light appears to speed up. And it's swirling. It's like a mass of energy picking up bits of debris, stone, fragments of the bus, different things swirling around it. And it connects. He is eviscerated within seconds. Chunks of flesh drop and hit the ground. And a mist of red hangs in the air for a couple of seconds before it slowly drifts down. Probably take a sanity check then for that one as well. Jay and Bobby, please give me sanity checks. Boom. 19 out of 40. Hard, hard, hard success. I'm you know, rock. My sanity is 60. I'm going to roll my brand new dice. There's what could go wrong here. It's what all... could go wrong? 52. So you both succeeded. Yep. Yeah, Bobby, yours was 60, but you rolled a 52, yeah? Yep. Yep, so you lose one point of sanity. Okay. And your involuntary action oh. is that you drop your phone and don't realise it. Okay. Jay, drop you're... it inside the bus? Yeah. Yeah, it just okay. drops to the ground. It clatters because you're in, still inside the bus. It clatters and drops between some chairs and some posts. Jay, you don't lose any sanity because you rolled a, a hard success. So you're okay. You've seen things. Maybe you're a reporter like in Iraq or different you've seen people disappearing yeah like, I've, seen, I've seen bad things happen That's you've, seen, part of the you've bio. seen bad things happen and this light is just hovering where this person I'm gonna, was I'm going to move my torch away from it because it doesn't seem like a good idea to point at the light yeah okay. and I'm going to step right back from the window but I am going to move the light round to see in the area see if there's any other blue lights we're on the side of the bus, so I'm going to get a 360 view as much as I can. You won't, because you'd only see the above you. It's where yeah, the side windows the, would be. Put the camera out of the window that I've smashed. So that's but, what you do. You're putting the camera yeah. out. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, putting the camera out and then pulling back in. You, you don't see any other blue orbs as such, but you do hear a little bit of commotion coming from the lower deck. Jack, would, yeah. Jack, I'm going to, I'm trying to comprehend what I've just seen, and he's going to try and make some sense of it. The, Jack, just the guy that went outside, he's, I think he's been run over, or something's hit him, or something, something, he's disappeared. He's, oh, that's, that's terrible. This some... makes this doesn't make any sense, and this girl, she's not in a good way. I don't know if she's going to make it. Oh, okay. I don't know. I've tried to stabilise her the best I can. I don't... I, I, I... Where where are the hospital staff, the ambulance? Hopefully they're the, on their way, but... The police? It doesn't... It looks really weird outside. There's no lights at all, and there's just this light. The, the guy went outside, and this light him, but it didn't... It wasn't a car, it, it just disappeared and he just, he fell into chunks. Maybe we're on a train track. Well, there's, the light's still there, it's just, it's not going anywhere. I don't know, Bobby. Oh, I'm going to shout upstairs. Did you see, did you see that? Yeah, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come downstairs. I'm going to crawl down, down the path and speak to him in person rather than shouting because it doesn't... Yeah. Yeah, so as you, as you, as you, there are bad people out there, them shouting is not a good idea to attract their attention. Yeah. As you make your way along the left hand side of the bus, you have to pull yourself up to get into the stairwell to be able to get round to yeah. the other side. As you're doing that, you look through the right hand side of the window and yeah. it only reveals a cloudy sky overhead with occasional flickers of lightning, like I, I said before. 
There are no signs of streetlights or buildings above you. There's no silhouettes of that above you. But you manage to clamber and you get through. And Jack and Bobby tending to this young lady. What else happened to the bus driver? Are you going to have a look? Yeah. Yeah. So as you get up to the cab, there is no cab left. It is totally impacted and there is black rock jutting in through the window. You see a pool of blood forming where the door would have been. Okay. I'll go back and um, speak to them both by the girl and just say, oh, oh hi, um, it's poor time to introduce myself, but I'm Jay. I was upstairs in the crash. I saw what happened to the guy when he went outside. What was that? What, what happened? He got hit by something. I, it's dark, so I can't really see but bits of them went everywhere, so we have to assume there's a problem outside. We have to be very careful when we move around. It might be an electrified track or something, or trains, or it could be lo- it could be anything. So we mm. need to be very careful when we step outside. Well, we've, we've, yeah, we've got, we've got a young girl here who's really badly injured. I've done an initial check and observation, and she's stable, but she's going to need hospital treatment as soon as possible. Otherwise, it's serious. She, she's probably going to die if we don't get, don't get her to a hospital within the next we need to make a phone call or tell someone mobile network is down from what i can see the same on mine yeah i can't get a signal Um, so can you text be a terrorist attack in london because that'd be the only reason the phones are down i'm I'm going to try and text jack on my phone Mm -hmm. yeah as you punch in uh what are you texting him just uh hello hello As you're punching, it goes to the set function, and then you get that little red exclamation mark in a circle, fail to send. Network is down. Network is definitely down. So, yeah, we have to assume that something serious has happened, because if you can't find phone 999, I'm assuming you guys have tried, Yeah. um, that there's something serious has happened, and that if we can't see any lights in the buildings, it means either the power grid and the phones are down, which means we're in serious trouble. We need to attract... Uh, the attention of uh, someone who can help so if we have no lights maybe we make a fire oh, have you, got, uh, you got a torch on your phone guys yes but i the battery is much low all right okay and you need I'm, to i'm not sure um, we should set a fire on here jack not in here oh, this, oh, okay. on the side or outside maybe even one of the tires or something to make smoke and yeah. yeah. Well, we can't. I don't know. How, don't know much about first aid, but if she's got a neck injury, injury moving her at all could be really can't bad. We can't, well, yeah, we can't. I'll, I'll... In that case, either one of us needs to go for help, or we need to have a look at what's outside. But I don't want to go anywhere near where that where that guy died. I was gonna say, yeah, by some what's just happened, I was reluctant to go out that way. Is it what, what's what's the front of the cab? Can we get out that way? No. No. Yeah, as as you're look as you're looking around, that there is some of the poles have come loose that were on the bus, so they're like round, and a couple of the seats, like the seat backs, have come loose and they're lying around. Give me, Bobby. Give me a spot hidden. Okay, and I have got fifty five in my spot hidden, so. Uh, 22. Oh, nice. Very nice. Looking around as well, you see a fire extinguisher, one of the little ones that you get on buses. But you also, you can smell something, Bobby. You can smell fumes. Okay. For a moment, it's you think it's petrol, but... No, you recognise the smell. It's, it's diesel. Okay, can you smell that? I, can, I think I could smell diesel, but I think we're going we're gonna to need to make a, a decision very quickly here. Uh, yes, I'm starting to smell. Um... Oh, we need to move her then. I'll, I'll take responsibility, but we need to move her. We can't um, move her here, she'll die. So I'll give we'll... you a hand. Jack, can you just grab that fire extinguisher that's over there on on, on the side? Can you grab that? Is that okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, and I'll go over and pick that up. Actually, um, when I, I'll look at them both. Who looks the strongest? Who's the most built out of the two of you? I'll say. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, I have got a size of 70. Ooh. Jack, you're a tank. I have got a size of 65, so I'll pick the... I'll pick the... I've got <laughs> the a size fire of extinguisher. I'm... 
jacked. Yeah. Yeah, you're all doing quite well, actually. Yeah, so as you're, like, the commotion and everything's going on, out the corner of your eye, the blue light, it appears to be going up to where the top of the bus would be. And in that general direction, so it's on the level that Jay was on. And it's getting closer to the getting closer to the bus. And you see the light you see the light change slightly as you assume it enters the top of the bus. It's moving quite slowly. Okay. Well I'm gonna say let's move it, because whatever that was had a problem. So yeah. I'll grab the fire extinguisher. Jack, if you could yeah. help him. What's your name again? I quite forgot it. It was Jay, okay. Thanks, Jay. Let's get out of here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we'll start trying to move her as carefully as possible. Yeah, and, and, and being a porter, you would know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, so. so I'm going to grab a couple of the cushions, the backs of the chairs, to make a stretcher. Yeah. And in fact, one of them should be long enough just to be able to put her on that. And then the two of us can then pick it up and move her out through a window. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, so you'll be able to go through out through the exit. And and this takes you about five minutes to cobble something together. And as you're doing this through the stairwell that would be on your right hand side the blue light is getting a bit stronger you feel and you hear knocking and banging coming from above but yeah you manage to get her on the stretcher on there balanced and so are you all exiting the bus yeah yeah (coughs) okay what is this light and this banging and noise the lights will hit the guy that i think it's what killed the guy hit him of the train light lights from trains don't come into buses so i don't know what it is jack i've got no idea but all i know is that it touched him or it got near him and he exploded basically so we need to move we need to move now okay i'll agree with that okay slide the cushion through the yeah so you manage you manage to do that and jack as you step out your feet touch the ground and it makes like a slight like wet noise where you're walking in the diesel as you're all stepping out and you get out to the side of the bus to the back of the bus i'll move you all out and you see the lights in the bus at the moment is there any lights on the bus Um, like like the the brake lights yeah yeah no yeah, are they flashing indicators and things like that? And... Yeah, it's all the lights are on, flickering on and off inside the the lights that run across the top, like the top of the bus that illuminate it. They're 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 shorting out, flickering. Um, but this is a very prominent blue light that's moving down the top. Do, do we walk past the area where the we would have seen the guy get killed? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna look down and see if there's anything I can see as we as we walk. I'm gonna I'm gonna as you go to do that I'm gonna say don't look at it. Oh, experience, don't look at the don't look at the cop. I just want to know what I just want to know what we're dealing with. It doesn't matter what we're dealing with. It won't do it. You won't be helping yourself. Trust me on this. You want to look? Yeah. Yeah. So as you're walking past, you shreds of white cloth and grey cloth. Which you can assume are his, the person's shirt and trousers, just lumps of flesh, nothing distinguishable as you're looking through this. But you also see you see an ID badge. Can I make yeah. out the ID badge without touching it? Yeah, there's a it's a face of uh, a youngest chap that make that. Like the blood spatter is hard to make out, but it does look like the guy that was on the bus earlier. And you see, you just make out the last name, which is Walker. The other is it's covered in blood. You could wipe it off, but I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna touch it. I just, well, it, it shredded him. I, I just wanted to see what it done to him. It, this is uh, horrible. 
I'm not sure if I'm standing in the diesel or his brain. They're both, I would say. Um, it's not nice. Let's, let's move on. Let's get away. <laughs> where, where we take the girl. Yeah. Well, we need to keep moving yeah. forward. So, looking out now, you're all on this wasteland. The rock, they're not volcanic. There's something unnatural about these rocks. As you're looking and the light flashes with lightning, but once again, no thunder, you see the ground start to light up and between the cracks of the ground, light travels ahead of you and symbols like circuitry on circuit boards as well in the ground and they appear to go to this very tall structure far in the distance which lights up gently that's on top of an outcrop well gentlemen we only have one destination and one destination to go to so say we get to it i am these rocks, these look like, I'm not sure how, how you say it. So I'm going to try to make a space a rock. I fail. Yeah, it looks, it looks, oh, yeah. Jack, can I just yeah. ask the obvious question? Where's the streak gone? Mm, I, I, have to, I have to assume that we're not on Earth, basically. Yeah. yeah. And, and I forgot to add as well, so for any sanity you did lose, but from seeing the blue orb, you get to add that to your mythos. I, I think you guys do that anyway, but... No, good shout. I'll <coughs> add that to my... Takes him up to... One! Hey! There you go. Yeah. So, Jay, you try to roll. You got a 46 versus 5. That's definitely a fail. It's a failure. Okay. So, you actually, in the distance, in front of this tower, if you're moving across, you see the remnants of a building that you would come to before the tower. Should, should we head towards the building? Before yeah. we go to the tower, just to try and get out of... Let's get away from this all for starters, and then... Try and find some shelter. It's not what on does fire the um, full of diesel. building is it? What does it look like? Does I don't know. Look... You'd have to move closer to see it. It's going to take you about five minutes to get there, you think. Okay. Sort of the distance. Okay. So I think we'll walk towards it slowly, but not perhaps get too close until we know a bit more about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you able to move your tokens on the map? Yeah. I'm just checking. I don't know, because... Sometimes it, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So you walk across this outcrop of rock that you're landed on. You scrape marks in the ground from where the bus must have skid and collided. And as you move closer, this building is... It's the size of, let's say, a bungalow. We where that token is there that's just moved across. Yeah, you would be where... Me. Let's move you up. You would be where Jake is. Yeah. And then I'll move the girl up with you. And what sort of... When you say it's the size of a bungalow, does it look like a bungalow? Or does it look it, like it, a... It, is it just like a square, like, concrete? It, it's a square building. It It's quite dark in this light. Though you can make out there appears to be some damage on the side of the building. What colour is the building? Does it uh, look like a... It's, it's the same colour as the rock that you're stood on. Hmm. Is there any sign of entry or anything like that? Uh, what would make out to be a door or... You're, you're, you're quite far away from the moment okay. of the building. But if you are going up closer, you, you make your way up to the building. It looks like something has recently damaged this building one of the walls is caved in there's bits of paper fluttering in the wind and um, it's like we've crashed into a like a canyon and maybe the bus hit this building yeah jack i think you could be right um bits of paper is there any chance of grabbing hold of the paper or yeah yeah so it's swirling in the wind 
Um, give me a dex. Okay, I have a dexterity of 65, so 15. 15, yeah. You manage to grab a piece of this paper that's uh, fluttering in the wind, and it feels like leather parchment. Um, and as you look at it, the text is... It's not, you haven't seen anything like this before. It's symbols and swirls and something quite unusual about it. It's all lovingly handwritten. A character question. As Bob and, and Jack were obviously into gaming and that type of stuff, because they were wanting to create a a games club would they recognize would they have come across this sort of script in games before like oh, would he recognize it or would it look like arcane script to him would he it would look like something that you would make that you yourself bobby and jack would be making up in the break room at work it looks like just gibberish but there is a pattern to it i'm going to show jake let's say look this it's like a lever parchment with all this strange writing on it mm. or strange symbols I'm going to search the building while they're doing this it's it's like the, in um, that book with the elves and they talk the language yeah, yeah. I'm um, going to uh, yeah I'm going to have a good search while they're doing that all right it's... slow slow down Jake I, I know you're keen I don't, I, don't, I don't think we've landed in middle earth no, Jack, no, well, definitely not in the middle of the earth. Well, so the, the comment there. There's much strange going on. I worry about this girl, and we need to take her somewhere. Uh, and I'm just going to get out and check my phone again, see if there's, see if the, no. the signal's improved. No. No, no signal. And if you try calling emergency services again, it's you get the same beep 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 come through on the phone. I think you're um, right, Jack. I think we need to get this girl. Should we take her to the building? Jay, Jay do you, well, you say we you need go? to see if there is Wi-Fi? <laughs> <laughs> there might um, there might be some Wi-Fi in the in the building. Do you think? Yeah. yeah. Jay, do you want to go and have a quick look? Yeah, I don't yeah. think there's any Wi-Fi in the building, lads. But yeah, yeah, okay. So Jay, as you're walking closer to the building you make out what look like tire skid marks from where the collision is on the side of the building. It's made of black stone, similar to what you're standing on and the cliffs to the side of you, to your left. As you get closer, you... Give me a listen roll. Ooh, 52 versus 60. Nicely done. As you're getting closer, you hear it and you see a foot with a slipper poking out from underneath the rubble. Go, go over and help. Okay. He's covered in quite a lot of rubble. Guys, like guys, come and help me. Uh, there's, someone, there's someone in the rubble. There's what? Somebody in the rubble? Yeah, looks like they've fallen out of the bus. We need, we, we put the girl over here by the building. Yeah, I'll help, I'll help Jack pick up the girl and take her to the building. Yeah. And then I'll go across and help Jay. Where's this, where, 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 where are you talking? Oh, run towards where the, where I can see the foot. Yeah, yeah. So you're pointing to what would be like a rudimentary. There's a couple of beams over this over this leg with the slipper on the foot twitches as you get closer and you just hear and you hear like incoherent sentences coming out but they sort of have they have a flavor of hindi i'm gonna whisper to bob be careful it might be a witch <laughs> Buildings fall on those quite a lot. I, I, I check down just to make sure there's not any red slippers in sight, and I, I turn back to Jack and say, I, I think we're okay here, 
Jack. <laughs> I think we're okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can never quite tell when there's witches about. I'll say we're definitely not okay. We're okay. <laughs> Uh, As you, are, are, are you starting to clear the rubble? Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 it takes you the best part of half an hour to get this man uncovered. And this man, he appears to be wearing what looks like, like a purple velvet robe with yellow symbols stitched all over it. Are they the same sort of symbols that we saw in the book? They're very similar to the symbols that Bobby and Jack's seen, yeah. And it, this is a slender, handsome man in his late middle ages. He's got silver hair. His silver hair is thinning, and he has a neatly trimmed moustache. And he's drifting in and out of consciousness. Is there any visible signs of injury? Apart from all the stones and stuff that yeah, landed on it. <laughs> apart from all the rubble that was on top of it. Yeah, it looks like he's taken a thwack to their head. You could try and stabilise him if you wanted. Yeah, definitely try that. Yeah, so give me a first aid, whoever wants to be doing uh, that. I've got 75 in first aid, so I'll give it a stab. Yeah. 42. Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, he, he sort of comes around and he's speaking at you in Hindi. Do you speak English? Yeah. What happened? Oh, and he drifts out. He drifts unconscious and conscious again. Oh, what's, 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 what, what are you doing here? We're in some sort of realm. Our bus hit something. Your bus? Yes, a bus. You know what a bus is? Yes, I, I know what a bus is. It hit the building, that's why there was rubble all over you. And he's just sort of like we? drifting in and out. But what's the last thing you remember? Oh, it's in my... Hit my head. <laughs> in my building and then black. What, what, what building were you in? This you... one. <laughs> this one here? Back. In, in... Yes. How do we get back to London? London? London. The city of London in England. Yes, I know the city of London. Well, we're, not in we're not in England now, are we? We're in your yeah. house. He just looks at you for a while, quite perplexed. Uh, are you from... You? Delhi, yes, Delhi. You're from Delhi? Yes. Is this your house? He just looks at you in silence for a moment. Okay. Yes. Uh, do an insight to work out whether or not he's he knows something. Yeah, give me a psychology check. I'm rubbish at psychology. Seventy-eight verse ten. You've got better psychology than that, wouldn't you? <laughs> so you you don't know if he's telling you everything that he knows but then he does look very confused at the same time he's taken a clobber to the head he's just looking at the three of you in shock it's the last thing you remember being in delhi who are you bobby ask him what it says on his um jacket on his robe Clothes. Good on, uh, good thinking, Jack. Good thinking. What's that on your robes? What are those? What are those uh, things that are emblazoned and embroidered on your robe? He looks at you a bit longer before he is. He's trying to find the right words. S symbols. What for? His eyes sort of flicker and he sort of goes unconscious again for a moment and comes back. Protect, protection. They do a very good job. He's alive, isn't he? Not against buses, you idiot. I'm going to prop him up and walk him towards the door. Yeah, he's struggling to stand up. Yeah, I'll prop him up so we can actually see outside. 
Mm. And I'll say, we're not in Kansas anymore. Or London. Or Delhi. So He, he looks... How does he look? He looks disappointed in you for bringing up a Wizard of Oz reference. And he's okay, Toto. Okay, then. I'll say this is not the uh, the Matrix I plugged into, then. To use no. a more common reference. Can you get us home? You get yourself home the same way everyone else does. What? In what way is that? Because that's pretty cryptic for someone that we've just re rescued under a pile of rubble. Yeah, he, he just looks at you. What do you... What is your job? What, what do you do? Well, I'm a doctor. Oh. Good doctor. I'm a very good doctor. And doctor of what? Um... Uh, the psychology. I'm sure you are. <laughs> you don't seem shocked to find that we're not in Delhi. Why is that? This. Oh. Um, I, I, just so you know, I'm a journalist, so asking poignant, pointed questions is what I do. And. I have a sense when people are not telling me the, the whole story or perhaps not telling me everything. And in a situation where we have someone dying outside, I tend to get yeah. angry quite quickly. Dying? Who? Yes. Yeah, we had a, there was a guy killed about 20 minutes ago outside of our bus that was not in London anymore. And he was completely annihilated by a blue light. So that yeah. might wanna, you might want to have a think about that. Through like your conversations and things he is just drifting in and out still like it's hard to get anything from him more though he mutters something about not letting her go and sort of like drifts in and drifts out i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna say to the other one when he's drifting out that this guy's not telling us everything and I'm very suspicious of him, as he knows what the symbols are, and he didn't seem shocked that we're not in London. I'm going to check his. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going to pat him. I'm going to pat him down while he's yeah. drifting in and out. See yeah. if he's got anything on him. As you go to pat him down, it's as if his essence disappears in front of you. He fades out of existence, right in front of you, and. There is no one there. I'm going to turn roll, to... roll sanity, please. Are the are the robes and things still there? Or is everything just no, disappeared? Every everything's disappeared. Current sanity of fifty nine. I had success. Thirty one versus forty. Yeah, you still lose one sanity. All right. Yeah, I know. I'm well aware. <laughs> I had a success of 33 compared to 50. Is that a regular success? I That's think a it is, isn't it? Regular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you lose one point of sanity. And Bobby. I had a sanity of 59 and I rolled a 62. Oh. Okay. I will, uh, I'll turn the edit mode on to my character sheet. Yeah, Bobby, you lose four points of sanity. Okay. Seeing this. And remember to add it to your Cthulhu Mythos, your uh, sanity you've just lost, guys. Um, you've lost five in total. Yeah, but it wasn't in one hit. It wasn't in one hit, no. No, so you'll be all right. But when you lose one fifth, let me know. One fifth. That's 12, I think, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Maths. So, yeah, so as you all see her, see him vanish out of existence in front of you, are you looking around? Are you. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a good search now. Okay, so I looking can't. around, Jay, the structure contained one large room. There are remains of a bookcase, a desk in the wreckage. Searching reveals no sign of bedding, food, or drink, or any sanitation facilities. Give me a spot hidden. I shall, Jay. So you search and you're searching through everything and this just takes you a bit longer like the whole fell forwards thing you haven't yeah. fell and as you're moving the desk and the bookcase and things your foot it it 
knocks onto a book that was largely buried in the rubble. Um, so yeah, you find a cloth-bound book, and it looks newer than the rest of the parchment that has been flying around and things. Okay. Take that back to the desk. Yep. So the guys, all I found looking around was is uh, is, is one book. What's what, what's the book? What's the title of the book? It's a hand-bound cloth book. It's got scribbling in from all different languages and different images are in there. There's lots of pictures about with like arrangements of crystals in there with crosses next to them and ticks. They're like in sequences. And then there's like uh, crosses, no ticks, sorry, question marks next to them is there anyone with all ticks no there's there's some with like lots of question marks yeah i don't feel like lots of question marks but is there one with lots of ticks there's no ticks ah okay is there one with no question marks yeah there's ones with that that it looks like whoever's been working through it they were trying to figure something out they were trying to figure out like a formula of something go to the very back of the book if you're writing in a sequence, uh, normally the answer is at the end. Yeah, you get to the back of the book and the pages are blank. The book hasn't been finished. Okay. I don't know enough about a cult to do anything with this, so I'm going to go outside and have a look round. Okay. Yeah. You look round and you're still in the same place. No. Around the cabin. What are you looking for? The tower entrance. Oh, okay. So we'll hold up a bit there. So as you're walking around looking, you see the silhouette of this tower looming over you. It looks to be approximately about 70 foot tall. The tower itself is its a tall structure which appears to be in the shape of a fist clenching. It's very humanoid in nature, though... The How thing... big are the steps? Huh? How big are the steps? They're normal uh, size steps, yeah. Yeah, the reason I ask is because if someone's larger than the normal, then the steps would be bigger. Yeah. So the tower is a f closed fist with long, thin, spindly fingers, which look like they penetrate into the palm of the hand. Yeah, <clears throat> nothing good can come from that. The tower itself is, it looks about 70 um, feet high and around 20 foot wide. The structure is shaped like a humanoid firearm, like I said, though there's something different about this tower. It's made of white stone. The tower has thick walls which emit a gentle white light providing slight illuminations around it. And as the, the sky flickers with lightning, you see the trails like static running across the ground and going into the tower and stopping about halfway up. Okay. I'll, I'll go back to the thing and tell the guys what I found. Okay. Uh, I'll say... As we're having a chat, yeah. Yeah, so I've, I've had a look around, a good search while you guys were making sure the woman doesn't die. And the only other building in this gorge that we can see is this fist structure. I'll describe it and then say, I suggest we go towards it. As there's nothing more of use here. Have you kept hold of the book, Jay? I've left it with you guys. I'll, I'll, I'll take the book and I want to have a look through it as well, just to make sure I see if there's anything I can see from looking through it. But... Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you see the, the the same sorts of things that have been described to Jay. So you see there seems to be someone's trying to figure out an equation or something, and there's different scripts in there, so it's not just one kind of text. It's all different kinds of texts that are in there, but it's jumbled. Give me a library use role. Hmm. 
Library use. So I've got 30 in that. That's more than what I was expecting. 81. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you're just, like, flicking through. Though, you do come across a page which is... It's a diagram of rune shapes, but not runes, you know, like different markings, all in a circle. Okay. And I'll ask Jay if the tower that he was saying about was made out of the same rock. No. Different. Look, all the lightning impulses or the lights from the floor are going towards the tower. Which would worry me ex exceptionally more, but we have nowhere else to go. There's no food, there's no water, and the woman's dying, so we have no, no real, no, no real other impotence apart from to carry on. Mm. We need, As we he says, the woman's dying. Sorry, Jack. Sorry. We need we need some help apart from that Doctor. man. Disappeared. I don't think we're going to be getting any help. I think we have to help ourselves. That's what he told us. As Jake said the, about the girl dying i'm gonna just check her vitals and prompts me to see whereabouts uh, as good a guesstimate as i can make as where she how she is okay so you want to see how long she's got yeah well, so I, I just want to make sure she's still alive so... okay yeah yeah give me a medicine check uh, medicine. or first aid whichever one you want that's 100 it's 100 so you... <laughs> Uh, whoever bought me these dice, um, <laughs> okay, is getting them. You can say they're shaved down yeah. and approved. <laughs> you probably can't see that. Three, three zeros on the okay. D10, and yeah, yeah, okay. So as you're trying to, as you're trying to do, see how she's doing, checking her over, and things, you. You, you slip and you slip and you you land on her and you hear the snap of a neck and she lets out a death rattle her last breath and she dies with you led on top of her can you please roll sanity for me, Bobby? You've hurt her. I think I've done more than hurt, Jack. In all honesty, I, uh, I don't think. Yeah, Thirty-three. I don't think, I don't think this can be fixed. Yeah, you lose one point of sanity, but it's gonna stick with you that you've accidentally killed this woman who was probably traveling home from a late shift at the restaurant or something this woman that was probably <laughs> study studying to make the world better and you're on a wasteland and yeah this is what happened whilst you're led on her though can jack and jay um actually no you haven't got to roll anything after her death rattle a bluish like orb emanates from her body a small very small like the size of a golf ball and it travels up to the tower slowly and is absorbed halfway up into the building okay i'm going to you um... can both roll sanity for that don't worry bobby we'll get them they did <laughs> 79, uh, 79 verse I failed that time. You did. Yeah, I failed as well. 64 okay. against 49. Okay, so Jay, I'm really sorry you lose six points of sanity. We'll come Ooh. back to you in a moment. And Jack, you lose three. There's probably a little voice in Bobby's head at the moment going, you're going to die anyway, to be fair. <laughs> so, yeah. so I push uh, Bobby off and give her and start giving a CPR. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll come back to you in a moment. Jay, can you roll intelligence for me, please? I can. 
Come on, fail. Okay. <laughs> can you roll a d10 for me, please? I can indeed. Four. Four. Okay, I would like you to play this how you see fit, but I would like you to play it. But you suffer severe paranoia. Can you roll a d10 for me, please? For two rounds, you become severely paranoid that everyone is out to get you or that you feel someone ha or they've betrayed you. I snatch um, the book from the table while the two are fussing over the corpse. Yeah. And run out towards the tower. Okay. With no explanation. Jack, you... You were giving... Trying to give CPR yep. to this lady and she's like a rag doll. And as you touch her and then try to get, do the compressions and then try and give her like the kiss of life. I'm giving chest compressions and, and Bobby, there's no breath in her. She's, she's cold. I hate to say it, Jack, but I heard a snap when I fell on her, so I think I think I broke her neck. Oh, but you killed her? Oh, I didn't actually kill her. That's, uh... I hastened oh, her... I hastened Bobby, her death. Yeah, you... Bobby, that's, that's bad. You are a murderer. Oh, come on, Jack. Gosh. That was an accident. You... You killed the girl. I think I didn't kill... I te technically, I didn't kill her. No, she and, was uh, not... You, I hear this argument and I just shout from the distance. He'll kill you too! Yeah. <laughs> you can shut up as well. Yeah. So as you two are talking, you've noticed that Jay has ran off and he's ran off towards the tower. And yeah, he shouts to you that. I'm serious, Bobby. You're my friend, but you did murder. M no, I did not. M I didn't murder her. Uh, murder implies that there was an intent to... I... Been trying to save her all the way through this oh, flipping thing. You Maybe you'll need a lawyer. Me yeah, snap. No, <laughs> any, anybody can trip. It's just a trip. Anybody can trip oh, on. Yeah. You snapped her neck. Yes, I did snap her neck. You're absolutely right, but that wasn't. Can we can we stop talking about me snapping her neck? She was. No, I just don't think it's good. Well, thanks for your thanks thanks for your sympathy. Well, you yeah. are my friend, Bobby. I just tell well, you. Well, you wouldn't think so. Flipping heck. I just tell you how I feel. Well, yeah, okay. Dad, Jay, he's he ran away. He stole the book and he ran. Where's he doing? Where's he gone? Oh, he's uh, he's shouting things. Can't he hear it properly on the wind, but I hate to be insensitive, Jack, but do you. Should we, should we just check the girl's pockets to see if she's got anything in them that might be useful or not? What sort? What? Well, she might have a phone. She might have... I don't know. I'll check for a phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as you're patting her down, you do find some items in her pocket. You find some house keys with a little cat key ring on. You find, you find a student ID in a purse. It's... The student ID for Jasmine Coldwaller, and it looks like she was training to become a nurse. This is bad, Bobby. What was um, bad? What's bad now? I think she had a cat. And what's, what's it, the cat it, got to do with it? It'd be starving. I think, she never go. She never go home to the cat. I think. I it think. Just, I think this lady's cat. Is the least of our worries, Jack. Oh, to be honest, oh. if you just take a look round in in the barren wasteland with some dude that's just disappeared in front of us, and you're worried about a random woman's cat that's might that might cat survive anyway. They're survivors. They're, it'll, it'll be fine. Only if she has rodents in the house. I hope she does. I hope she does. <laughs> I hope she has. I hope she has ghost rats. Our game, I want to show pet insurance. Um, so yeah, so we actually cut to you, Jay, and Jay, you have you have ascended the stairs. 
you're out of breath, you're clutching the book in your hand, and God, you really thought they were going to hurt you, but oh, it, it it just ha it was fleeting in your mind. It's all cleared up now as you're catching your breath, but that that nurse, he killed her. But yeah, you're no longer paranoid. Oh, I wish it was that easy in real life, mate. But, yeah. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay. I'm still powered though, mate, just not in the game. Okay, yeah. so I, I'll walk back down the stairs and say to the guys, come on, there's nothing more you can do for her. I'm not you, Star. I'm not starting. I'm just saying, tell him about the cat. Likes, they're going to they're gonna be here somewhere. Just don't worry about telling him about the cat. He doesn't need to know about the cat. Okay. And just you'll send him there's no cat let's just let's all move on from the cat the only, the only direction we've got to move on is into the tower so follow me i have the book okay. follow me i've got the book what does that mean it means the only place we've got to go is the tower and i'm the i've got the only object we've found that's of any use i suspect the one that you just ran towards and left us but sort yeah of... that was the one yeah so you get to the base of the tower all three of you um, leaving the lady by the building. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to drag a corpse around with you, are you? It's only Wednesday, mate, not Thursday. So, yeah, no dragging corpses today. Bobby, I, I think we should have put rocks on her. If we get time, we'll go back and do the rocks later. But let's just, let's, should, we, should, we, should we try and look about getting out of this place first, Jack? I think that might be a good idea. That's a good idea. Okay. The tower is built up what looks to be fragments of rock building up but there is a, a door at the base of the tower in front of you. Jay, you've got the book why don't you go first? Okay. Okay. Are you just going in? Are you what are you doing? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna pick up on the rock and use it to push the door open. Yeah. Okay. You push the door open and it's the door itself is also made of stone, but it slides, it's hinged quite well. And it opens into um, a round room. There, the room looks surprisingly sparse with no furnitures of note, but you do see a staircase spiraling around the side going up. Call the others over. I'll get my phone out, turn the torch on. Yeah, Sorry. it's actually lit inside. It's as if the stone is giving off a glow. Okay, I'll turn my torch off then. No need to yeah. yeah, I'll just say it's pretty sparse there, boys. I think we're, perhaps we should uh, follow the trail. Yeah, yeah, after you. Sorry, your name was Jay? Um, Jay, can I have that fire extinguisher? Yeah. I'm gonna take the fire extinguisher off and uh, yeah. hold, brandish it in front of me. You're brandishing it, okay. As you're in this bottom room, you're sort of looking around. Like I said, it looks quite sparse, but drag marks on the floor of this room, they all lead to the front door. They look like furniture drag marks from like desks and chairs and bookcases. Would we be able to tell that so they're dragging from somewhere in the building towards they're, the door? They're, yeah, they're dragging from the inside out towards the door. I can't remember seeing anything outside that would warrant drag mark. Well, there was some furniture inside the building. Just rocks. Just rocks. Was there a desk? Outside. There was a desk and some other stuff. Some chairs. Papers. Rocks. Yeah. Should we carry on? Before we do, uh, the door's shut. How is it mechanised? Is it on a sliding hinge? Yeah, it's like a crafted sliding hinge, and there is a closing mechanism on the inside, like a latch. Cool. Can we put some rocks in the door? So I'll close. I'm going to close the door. Hang on, don't, don't close the door. Don't close. The door. It. If they were dragging stuff out and not in then I'm more scared of the stuff that's outside than it's inside. We don't know what's inside and now we can't get out, can we? Can we open the door? Yeah, I'll open the latch again. 
Yeah, and it it, it, it it is. It's like it's like a hinged latch, a metal like a okay. stone slab. It's really well carved, and it just sort of like drops in. So yeah, it's like a latch on a gate or whatever, but big. A rock in front of it, just for your your purpose. Just place a rock down. Is that what you're doing, Bobby? You're just going to place a rock down yeah. there, and yeah, two two yeah. rocks, just two rocks, on, just upon the side side. It's just two rocks. Yeah. Two rocks. Yeah. So the staircase, it's not built into the tower. It's as if it is part of the tower, and it spirals up into a hole in the ceiling. How how far up? About ten, fifteen foot. There's no banister. It's just all the way up the side. Anything else in the river? There's nothing else. It's all empty, isn't it? Yeah. Where the can the drag and the drag marks look like they're coming down the stairs? No, they so. look like they started in the room. Okay. And they've gone out. Well, there's nothing in here now. So now that we've secured the the door with the latch and the two rocks, let's let's go upstairs, shall we? Oh, I will. I'll take the lead. You've got the yeah. boot, Jay. Oh, and then um, my other hand, I have the hammer. I'm going to pull the pin on the fire extinguisher, just in case. Okay, cool. That's good thinking. Yeah. <laughs> so as, as you as you ascend the stairs again, another wide circular space. The walls are covered with bookshelves extruded from the stone walls with no visible joints. Most of the shelves are empty, but they're are books that remain in the shelves with some scrolls as well. Is there dust in this room? Not really. Not overly, no. That's annoying, because I was going to use the, the dust to work out who, what the last book was taken. I'm just going to look down the spines of the book. Is there anything that I'd recognise? Any English or Latin? Or would I be able to recognise any? No, there's only two or three three books on the shelf, left on the shelf, and none of them have anything written on the spines. They all look like hand-bound, okay. uh, with, out of different materials, different cloths and papers and cards. I'm just going to take one off the shelf and open it and see what it says. Yeah. Okay, so as you take a book off the shelf, that it's a book on anatomies of various intelligent creatures, though... These creatures, some of them have long spindly legs, wings and proboscises. There's nothing that you recognize here, apart from a picture of a cat in there. It's written in... It's written in enthusiastic, handwritten language. The text is in a unrecognizable script, but it is lovingly illustrated. Disturbingly, the scribe has used magic to am annotate some of the drawings, showing layers of flesh stripped back, revealing glistening organs beneath that pulse on the page in front of you. Can you roll sanity, please, Bobby? 54 at the moment. 36. Nice. You lose one point of sanity for seeing that. And you can add one point to your Cthulhu Mythos. Thank you. You see next to it there is maps and scrolls and different things. I'm going to show Jack. Jack, do this is. Do you want to have a look at this? It's got a picture of a cat. <laughs> oh, I find all of this Bobby's madness. Yeah. I, I, it's too much for me to understand. Yeah, agreed. Um, put the book back down. These insect creature things and the cat makes no sense i'm gonna not scroll for the books but read the titles and see what which ones they are Wait yeah, that... the first page to see if i can quickly identify what, what's what yeah they're all in script that you don't recognize though you do come across a handwritten document that's in alien script but with some more illustrations which suggest it might be a recipe book more unusually, more unusually, the ingredients 
and cooking implements depicted look far more familiar than the script might suggest. It looks like recipe books, and you swear for a moment you can make a recipe out from the pictures of the ingredients for, like, Swedish meatballs. Though the text is alien to the images. Okay. Uh, I do the same with the scrolls, but I'm assuming it's the same result. Yeah, you pull a scroll out and you find a map on vellum. And in the middle of the map, there is a small image of Earth in the center with different depictions of floating islands, maybe, different things around it all linked and interwebbed together. You can give me a Cthulhu Mythos roll if you like. Do you want to burn 40 luck? Yeah. Yeah? Burn 40 okay. luck. So you rolled 46 versus 6. Yeah. Spend okay. that luck. Spend that luck. You... You swear you've come across this in like ancient writings through your studies and articles and research that you've done and it you for a moment it pops into your head that this reminds you of an artifact that you found many years ago that described something called the dreamlands very similar to what this map looks like and it shows how they're all interconnected okay Sort of like Inception way, like a dream with it, a dream with it, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to say that's the guys, but that would make more sense by why the guy disappeared then, in that case, and told us how to leave. You leave like everyone does, by going to sleep. Yeah. Can you all roll power for me, please? Tell me if you failed or succeeded. Uh, 50 and I... This. 82, so that's a massive failure. Yeah. You lose. Can you take eight off of your power, please? Just strike it off. Bobby, what did you roll? I rolled 100. <laughs> 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 it's not going well, is it? Twice. How, what, what are the odds of that? What are the odds of that? Oh, I'll calculate it afterwards. Yeah. Can you take 16 off of your power, please? Thanks. And Jay, you can take 4 off of your power. 16, so that takes me down 44. Yeah. So. Jack, you're looking at Bobby and you see some blood trickle from out of one of his not from his like nostril. So you see blood trickle from his right nostril and you touch your face and you can feel wetness and you feel the same. And the same for you, Jay. I'm gonna suggest we move on, gentlemen, please up. Absolutely. So there's another staircase leading up. So you're all going up there? Yeah. You're also bad at moving your tokens. I have th this feeling that we were in this accident on the bus and and now we are um, not well and unconscious. And I remember Absolutely. people saying, stay away from the light. And we appear to be going towards the light. Well, there was no other direction to go to, apart from the blue light that eviscerated a man. We just learned to wake up. Good luck with that. Mm. Okay. Was, yeah. As you're saying this, I just don't. I just don't know how we do that. As you're saying this, walking up the stairs, Jack, again. A circular open space greets you. Though this room is slightly different, the walls are lined with clusters of crystals in various 
sizes, shapes and colours embedded in the stone. Pulses of light move through them in strange patterns, bringing each crystal to life. In the centre of the room, there is a blue orb about the size of a grapefruit sat in the middle and each time as the crystals glow it grows a couple of millimeters bigger and then there is a smaller one about the size of a golf ball sat just above it i'm going to open the book and do a, do a compare mm -hmm. does this look like a sort of ritual circle it doesn't look like a ritual circle, though the crystals, oh, pardon me, but the crystals are definitely depicted in the book. And as you're sort of skimming through, you hear, hello, I, I still can't see what's going on. Who's that? What do you mean, who's that? Who's talking? It's me, it's Dave. Dave? Who's that? Did you do this? Where are yeah, you? Where are Dave, you? Where are Dave, you? Dave? Dave Walker. I'm right here. Are you uh, blind as well? Well, slight problem, Dave. I, I was blind and now I can see. That's what I'll say to him. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean a slight problem? The dead Dave. Dave is dead. Dave dead. You're dead. Dave is dead. Dave, you're dead. Oh, it's so much worse than that. Bodies. What's, you, what's wrong with it? Going uh, to the gym and everything. It's this. It's a pile of mush, mate. To be honest with you. I... Uh, that's a bit rude, isn't it? Like I said, I've been going to the gym. It'll, it'll be all right. I no, just can't, in... I can't see. Well, you... it's a bit I hard to explain because I don't really know myself. And continue to look at the book to see if any of if I can. Sorry, can you say that again? Because I didn't hear what you said. Yeah, no worries. So is there another staircase, first of all? There is another staircase leading up, yeah. Cool. So I'm going to go up the next staircase while they're doing this. Okay. We'll come back to you in a minute, then. I'm just going to uh, have a quick bio as well. Okay. D Dave, um... This yeah? Is Jack. This is Jack. Who, um, who, who's Jack? It's me. Have we met before? Uh, I was on the bus. What happened? It was a bad crash. Yeah, I I remember and I got out the window and there was that ambulance coming towards me and then I couldn't see. It was a train. I don't think it was an ambulance. Wow, a train. So um, where, where, where am I? I think, as, as that man say, you're dead. We have one thing we need to know. How can I be dead? I'm speaking to you. If you don't get me out of here, I'm going to... I'm going to sort something out. I'm going to hurt you. Do you have a cat? No, I don't I don't have a cat. Question... What, a, what a silly question that is. I just need to know in case it starves. <laughs> no, I don't have a cat. Don't be ridiculous. Well, it's not ridiculous. After cook, plenty of people have cats. Can, to be fair. can you can you feel anything? No, this is this is really strange. Did, did you do this to me? No, no. The train. Why why would there be a train going along the high mm. street? It's a long story, Dave. But it, it many things we don't know. How we get in this hole? The train I, I, and the I, rocks. I, and I, I, as you're speaking to him, like the crystals sort of flash and, and this orb just gets just that little bit bigger just a couple of mil bigger is, what, what, Dave, who just, is this just... Dave's orb that's getting yeah. bigger? I mean, we... yeah just a little bit so the one outside the bus yeah. was like the size of a beach ball his right. was the size of a grapefruit so mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to whisper to Jack 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 we don't, we don't want to upset Dave no because no. I think he might I think you might get a bit angry. Mm, do you think um, Dave might be a train? I think Dave is a train. But um, on, the po on the positives, Jack, he's got no cat, so we're all right mm -hmm. on that on that respect. Yeah, no starving cat. No. 
Um, I'm going to yes. Dave will look after. We'll, we'll help you. That's no problem. If you just keep calm, but we'll sort the body situation out once we've got a bit more of an idea. Well, what's wrong with my body? Well, it's, I, I, I I can't feel my legs. You won't because your legs they they're they're not there anymore. Well, well, what do you mean they're not there? As I said, do you do you remember us talking about the train, Dave? Oh yeah, the train. Well, the train. You and the train had an interaction, <laughs> and trains tend to win those types of interactions. So what you're saying is I don't have any legs. You, you haven't got anything, um, mate. Yeah. What do you mean I haven't got anything? We'll sort it out. That's not a problem. Just keep calm. We'll get you a body. Okay. So give me a charm, fast talk, persuade, or intimidate. <laughs> Bloody hell, Bobby. Charm, fast talk. Where are we? Charm of 35, but fast talk 50. Let's go with fast talk. All right. 50. Yeah. If I roll 100, the dice are going back to you. The, the, the internet's getting turned off. Yeah. You I get? rolled a 10. Nice. So what are you trying to do? Uh, role play? I'm, I'm trying to go, but, but Dave, we just calm. We're, we're all going to keep calm. We're, we're, it's not a problem. Yeah, I, I can keep calm. I just yeah, had a bit to yeah, drink. We'll, that's all. Yeah, we'll get you a drink, and that's not all you. We'll, we're all going to get a drink. We ain't got no drinks here at the minute, but we'll get. We'll have a nice pint. We'll have a. We'll have a good beer. Yeah, first um, round's on you. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get you a kebab. No, no uh, problem. Uh, uh, no problem. But we all just need to keep calm. Yeah, all right. right. All right, I can. You're still alive because you're talking, so that's that's a positive. Yeah, it's it, it is. The oh. body bit's not so positive, but let's not dwell on that. Do you do you think it's shock why I can't see? Probably, yeah. It'll probably come back in a bit. Okay. Once we get you some eyes, you should be all right. I'll he, give you. He is a nurse. Yeah. Oh, I is oh. a doctor. You must listen to me. <laughs> he, he's. He's a nurse. Oh, okay. okay. Like you, you, you know what you're doing, then, eh? But I haven't quite come across this type of situation, but it's fairly standard for what, for what we do. Yeah. All right. The whole the whole body disassociated voice situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, I feel something's changing in me, but I'll yeah, I'll, I'll wait for you. You just remember Bob, Bob, Bobby, was it? Bobby. Yeah. Just could remember that. Remember that kebab in your head. Yeah, it was a bit crap in honesty. Well, think about the best kebab you ever had. Yeah, yeah, I'll do, I'll do think that. Think about that one. I'll do that. Yeah. Chili sauce, uh, peppers, none of that salad. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And he seems to be like the orb isn't as fluctuating as before. It seems to have calmed down a little bit. He's become less threatening towards you. And you, and you, obviously, you've seen Jay start walking up the stairs around the corner. Jack, do you, should we follow him or what do you, what do you want to do? I, 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 don't, I don't know, but I don't want to be around Dave, to be honest with you. Oh, well, Dave, um, why do you stay here? What, what do you mean, why do I stay here? I, I don't know where I am. No, but why you go out and look around? Because I can't see. It's about looking around. That's a bit insensitive, isn't it? You move and the stairs and things. And... Uh, no. Where? I can't see them. Nur Nurse Bobby has told me to to stay here and wait. Mm. No, I just wonder if there's um, things keeping you here. I, I, I don't know. You stay here, we co we'll come back. Can, yeah, can I'm, you, not, can, I'm not going anywhere. Can you see a light? Dave. It's, it's, it's all black. Dave. <laughs> Sorry, it's all, it's all black. It's all, it's all black. There's no light at all. If you do see a if you do see a light, Dave, then just head towards that, and then you'll be fine. Yeah, I did that last time, and now I can't see anything. So, yeah, I'll I'll think about it. Yeah, I'll probably take it if you go there next time. All right, all right. Because if you think about it, it's probably just two way. If you come through, and then you've got to go back out again. Yeah, yeah, that makes logic. Yeah, yeah. Hurry back, mate. All right. Donna kebab, Dave. Donna kebab. Donna kebab. Lovely. 
And yeah, so are you two? Are you two following? Yeah, we'll head upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. So Jay, as you walk around the stairs and up to the top, you stick your the topmost floor of the tower occupies where the clenched fist would be. It's larger than the previous floors, with a domed roof approximately 40 feet in diameter and around the same height at its apex. Despite this greater size, there is little in the room. The walls are featureless with no doors or windows, only the spiral staircase which terminates here. The only items to note is a raised circle in the centre of the room. You also see a blood smear near the centre of the room and there is what appears to be a white statue of a woman standing in the centre of the circle and the other two that as you come up to the come up to the room. Oh, is it the same as what I see in my book? Or similar? Having a little flick through it, it does look similar, yes. I'm shocked and appalled. Is that cool? Is that a statue? Uh, yeah. Do I recognise the statue, first of all? No. This statue stands about ten foot tall. It's of a it's of a woman made of very similar white stone that the tower is made of and it stands there though you see the blood stain on the floor it is it looks like something's been arranged is it does it look new does it look fresh i mean not new yeah it looks fresh it doesn't look like it's dried out at all no nobody else has been up here that we've seen have they no and i think we'll leave it there for tonight Ooh. Ooh. You little tease. Yeah. Yeah, you tease her. <laughs>